in the earlier phase of the current wave of globalization, you know, in the 90s and the early 2000s, the view was that globalization would benefit the North, that it was the United States and Europe that would be the great winners of uh, globalization. Now, what is happening now, I find this most fascinating, it is the United States and many European countries that are retreating from globalization. And they talk about decoupling, and they talk about, and in fact, erect barriers and all sorts of walls to impede free trade and the free movement of goods. And it is countries like China and countries in Africa and in Latin America that say, no, we need free trade. So this is a remarkable turnaround that we have seen. It used to be that the United States was a great champion of free trade. It no longer is. It talks about fair trade. Now, that used to be the language of you know, third world countries. So we were living in, in remarkable times in which you know, it seems uh, the world has turned upside down. And it is the countries from the global south that are championing free trade and globalization. It is very important, it seems to me, that we keep that in mind. As China contends with the issue of this deglobalization that we are seeing, it should focus the way I see it on the global south and realize that that is where the big opportunities lie and that is where the future lies. And let me give you one example that I find most remarkable. This example is BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative. For the past you know, nine years, we have seen how BRI has been criticized and decried by Northern countries saying that it is part of debt diplomacy, an effort to make countries in the global South incur debts and, and borrow money that they don't need and build white elephants that they don't need and so on and so forth. Suddenly they have changed their tune and they, the G7 came up with this thing, PGII, Partnership for Global Investment and in Infrastructure and realizing, yes, actually the Global South needs infrastructure. And so now countries in the North are also getting into the act. And it seems to me that is why China should persist in its approach of defending free trade, working with the Global South and moving forward on initiatives like, like BRI, because that is where the future lies.